Today, I'm going to be showing you guys the correct way of shiny hunting in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Yo, what is up you guys? It's Dominator here and we're back with another shiny hunting tutorial video. Um, this is a big one. I've been doing a Let's Go Shiny Living Dex for a while now. You can check out my playlist. I might have a card right here. Um, we're going for a full shiny living dex in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And we got some big news about how shiny hunting actually works in this game. So before we begin, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. YouTube tells me like, I think it's like 98% of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel. 90, I think it's 97. 97% of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel. So if you're one of those people who are watching this video and aren't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button. It's totally free and it helps me out a ton. And... Yeah, let's get right into this news. So recently, Anubis on Twitter tweeted out their findings for how catch comboing works in Let's Go, and it is completely different than what we thought it was. Originally, we thought that when you get a catch combo of 31 for a Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, it will raise your shiny odds to, I think it's like a 1 in 300 chance. If you have a lure down, the shiny charm, and then a 31 catch combo, it would raise your chance to a 1 in 273 shiny chance for every Pokemon that spawns in after. And when you finish your catch combo, you don't have to keep catching them. You can just keep going and every spawn will have the 1 in 273 shiny chance. That is actually completely false. So what Anubis found, and I'm going to be looking at this chart. I'll put the chart on screen and uh, also be sure to follow Anubis on Twitter. I'll leave their Twitter in the description below. I might even show it on screen now because... Like, come on, this person put so much work into this and finds so much info for shiny hunting. They figured out how to shiny hunt Sinistee using the knockout method in Pokemon Sword and Shield. They figured out how the 500 KO method really works in Sword and Shield. And now we're, they just found out how catch comboing works. Essentially, we thought that once you got your 31 catch combo, it raised the shiny odds of every Pokemon that spawned in and you didn't have to keep catching them. But that's completely false. The way the catch combo works is that base shiny rate is 1 in 40, 96, which is one shiny roll. Using a lure adds plus one shiny roll, so a 1 in 20, 48 shiny chance. Owning the shiny charm adds plus two shiny rolls, which makes it the 1 in 10, 24 chance with the lure. But if it's just the shiny charm, it's going to be a 1 in 13, 65 shiny chance. The catch combo bonuses only apply once to the very next spawn of the same species. Continue your catch combo by catching the same species to get the bonus again. If you are idling for spawns, shiny rolls are the same as not having a catch combo. Which means you gotta keep catching the same Pokemon after the 31 catch combo to get the higher shiny odds. So, let's just pretend that we get a 31 catch combo. In this case, I'm going to be going for Mankey. So we have we have Mankey on screen now. I, I don't even know. I might do a catch combo for this, but a, we got a Mankey right here. So we're gonna catch this Mankey. It's not a shiny, obviously. And we also have the shiny charm. We have we have a. I don't think we have a lure down actually. So we caught we caught the Mankey. It's gonna increase our catch combo. It's currently at one right now. It's not gonna say it though. It'll wait till we get another one. Um, we're gonna drop a lure though, cause that's gonna not only increase the chances of Mankey spawning, it's gonna increase the shiny chance of every Pokemon. Now, if you have the shiny charm and a lure down, those two will increase the shiny chance of everything. It's not based on the combo. The shiny charm will give you two additional rolls for a shiny, so it goes from a 1 in 40, 96 chance to a 1 in 13, 65. That applies to every Pokemon, not just what you're comboing. And then when you put a lure down, it gives you an additional roll for a shiny. So with the shiny charm and a lure, every Pokemon you are encountering has a 1 in 10, 24 chance of being shiny as opposed to the base 1 in 40, 96 chance. Now when you combo a specific Pokemon, for example, I'm comboing Mankey, once you get the 31 catch combo, it raises the shiny chance all the way from a 1 in 10, 24 to a 1 in 273. And we all assumed that affected every Pokemon at that point, and you could stop catching, you keep going, but that's not the case. What you have to do is after you get the 31 catch combo for Mankey, 
you keep catching each Mankey that spawns in because the combo only affects the next spawn of the Pokemon you are comboing for. So if you're comboing for Mankey and say a Pidgey spawns in, that Pidgey is still a 1 in 10 24 shiny chance. If you're comboing a Mankey, you catch a Mankey and then another Mankey spawns in, that Mankey has a 1 in 273 shiny chance. Now, I'm going to put all of the odds on screen now because it's different. It's based on the chain you have. I think it's like once you hit 11 chain, it gives you some additional roll. When you get a 21 chain and then a 31 chain, which is the max odds, it keeps adding to the shiny chance maxing out at a 1 in 273. So the chart should be on screen now. If you want to look it over, pause the video now and check out all the shiny odds. This is actually hilarious because if you've been keeping up with my Let's Go series, you know that I've been really frustrated with this game. I was like, I have the worst luck with this game. This game is terrible. I combo for a shiny. It's a 1 in 273 chance. And then it takes me hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon thousands of Pokemon to even get a shiny. And I just thought I had the worst luck, but it turns out it the combo didn't even matter. I was just encountering Pokemon at a 1 in 1024 shiny chance. And funny enough, it turns out I actually have really good luck with this game because I was getting a lot of shinies that were way under 1024 encounters, and only a handful of them went over that by much. So it actually turns out I have really good luck. So what So we, we got a shiny Sandshrew, it seems. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we got a shiny Sandshrew. This, this is a 1 in 10, 24 shiny chance. Trust me on this. This is going to reset our combo. I cannot believe this just happened. <laughs> even though we, we caught a Mankey, we didn't even hit a combo of 11. So no shiny odds were raised. The only... The only rolls we have are for the shiny charm and the lure. So this Saint True is a 1 in 1024 shiny chance. I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get to a combo of 31 Mankey. And then I will further explain. I might even try to get a shiny Mankey in this video. I, I already got a shiny Saint True. So there's that. But yeah, as I'm trying to get these Mankeys to spawn... I originally thought that my luck was so bad at this game, but it turns out after I got the catch combo of whatever I was going for, I would stop catching them. So that would in turn not increase the odds of anything. So I was I was essentially just getting a 1 in 10 24 shiny chance for every shiny I have essentially gone for in this game. Maybe a few exceptions. This is going to completely change the way I think about shiny hunting in this game. So we, we got our first Mankey here, but uh, I'm probably going to cut here and I'm going to keep going until I guess another shiny shows up or if we get the catch combo of Mankey. One thing I will point out is that even though I think the reason we all thought that the catch combo just needed to be at 31 and to get the highest shiny odds is because if you look at Let's Go like this with a lure down, you get a lot of Pokemon at a time. Like, you get a lot of them at a time. So, it's one of those things that even in a few hours, you'll probably hit that 1 in 10, 24 mark in the terms of just seeing Pokemon. So, even if they're not the higher shiny odds, you'll still have, like, a pretty good shot of getting a shiny. Which is probably the reason why we all thought it just kind of affected the odds of everything and that we would get shinies fast. It's just because the Pokemon would spawn a lot. I really hope this all makes sense, but once I get the catch combo of 31, I will visually explain it i also do want to mention while i'm comboing for this mankey there's just a whole nother dynamic of like how many resources you need for comboing for these pokemon now because you have to continue the chain uh, before it was like okay i need like let me get like 100 pokeballs and then once you get the 31 catch combo just kind of sit there don't catch anything you know you only need a few lures whatnot well, it's totally different now because if you have to continuously catch the Pokemon to get the higher shiny odds, that means that you need like hundreds upon hundreds of Pokeballs before going into a shiny hunt. So keep in mind, if you're starting a shiny hunt, it really does depend on the luck. Obviously, you can go back and buy more Pokeballs if you need to. That won't break your chain. And the chain mechanics work the same as we thought before. So the only way to really break your chain is if a Pokemon runs from you if you catch a different Pokemon other than the one you're chaining for, or if you turn your game off, like restart your game, turn it off, 
close it out, all that stuff. So that, those are the only ways to break the chain. I will also recommend buy all, like try to buy as many ultra balls as you can, because there's a lot of Pokemon that are really hard to catch in this game if you want a combo for them. Buy Ultra Balls, after you catch, I believe it's like 50 Pokemon, your odds of catching that Pokemon increase, and you can keep track of that in your decks, it'll tell you at the end of every catch how many you've caught. And I think there's three stages, I wanna say it's like after 50, 100, and then maybe like 200 or 300 or something like that, and you'll have max catching odds and the Pokemon will be pretty darn easy to catch. But to start, if you're going for a new Pokemon and you want to catch combo it, you're going to probably want Ultra Balls for the most part. Mankey is an exception because Mankey's not super hard to catch. Always come prepared for these because you have to catch a lot of Pokemon. All right, we just hit our catch combo of 11 for Mankey. Uh, the number caught in the decks, as you can see in the top right, says 14, so we're not going to have an increased chance of catching them. But at a catch combo of 11, Mankey has a higher chance to spawn now. And only Mankey, after every time we catch a Mankey, the next Mankey that spawns in will have a 1 in 585 chance of being shiny. So... We went, we essentially doubled our shiny odds now, and that only applies to the Mankeys that spawn in, but we have to keep catching them, and it's only the next Mankey that spawns in. So, if we get a Mankey that spawns in, and then before we catch it, another one spawns in, only the first one will have the higher shiny chance. The second one will just be a 1 in 10, 24. So we're going to counter this, we're going to keep going, and we're going to try to get to the 21 combo to increase our odds even more. All right, so I just got to a catch combo of 21, which means Mankey's spawn rate is higher now than it even was before after the original boost. And on top of that, we now have a 1 in 372 chance that Mankey has, is going to be shiny if it spawns in right after we catch another Mankey. So the next Mankey after we catch one. So that one that just spawned in, if you saw that in the corner, that one had a 1 in 372 chance of being shiny but if one spawns in right after that and we don't catch the initial the first one it'll be the one in 10 24 shiny chance so we're gonna keep going until we have the 31 catch combo and i'll see you when that happens all right so now we caught 31 mankeys we have the catch combo of 31 now the next mankey that spawns in will have a one in 273 shiny chance so this Mankey right here has a 1 in 273 shiny chance. The next one won't until we catch this one. If we catch this one, the next one will also have a 1 in 273 shiny chance, and so on and so forth. So if we stop catching them, they're just going to have a 1 in 1024 shiny chance. But if you keep catching them, they're going to have a 1 in 273 shiny chance upon the next spawn only. If two spawn in... The first one's got the higher shiny chance, the second one does not, unfortunately. So we're just going to keep catching these so that second one that just spawned in does not have the higher shiny chance, meaning we don't even have to do anything with it. We can just wait until another one spawns because it's just going to make it easier. We don't have to mess with that one because it's already generated, it's already spawned in. This one's going to be a pain though, so maybe we do have to do something with it if this one runs. So we're just going to leave that one because that one's already spawned in. This one that just spawned in had the higher shiny chance. We're just going to catch that to keep the combo going. So we're just going to keep going. We just, anytime we catch a Mankey, whatever the next Mankey that spawns in, that's the one we're going to catch. Any other Mankeys that spawn in before we encounter or catch an additional Mankey, we're not even going to worry about those because that doesn't even matter. We're not even going to add them. They're not boosted shiny odds, except for the fact that I have the shiny charm and allure. We're only going to worry about the next Mankey that spawns in after we catch a Mankey. So, and just keep catching them and keep catching them until the shiny appears because then we'll have the highest odds of getting a shiny because this shouldn't take terribly long. So we're not going to worry about these guys. We'll worry about this one though. Because that one just spawned in. That one had a 1 in 273 shiny chance. The rest did not. I really hope this is all making sense to you guys. Let me know if you have any additional questions in the comments below. I'm going to cut here. It's pretty late. We're going to actually, this one's actually going to run if I don't catch it right now. So we'll just wait for another, we'll just catch a different Mankey, but okay. Yeah, we're, we're just going to, if if they do that run and if they do an attack animation that keeps the circle, that means they're going to run. 
So we just avoid those ones, or we just run away from them before they can run. See, like, that one, it attacked, and the circle went away, and we couldn't hit it, which means it's not going to run. But if it does, like, that different animation, and the circle stays, that means it's going to run, and we only have so much time before it runs. So you're going to want to run from it before it runs from you, or else it'll break your combo. And we caught a Mankey. It continues our combo. The next Mankey is going to have the 1 in 273 chance. So, yeah, it's getting pretty late. I'm going to cut here, I will continue this hunt tomorrow, and I will see you when I get a shiny Mankey, because I'm certain this probably won't take too long with the really high shiny odds, so I'll see you then. I, did I, have I checked my bag recently? 500. Oh, hey, we did it. We did it. All right. So there you have it. We got our shiny Mankey. I'm going to quickly 175 combo. There's our shiny Mankey. Let's catch this in a premier ball. Now, while doing this, I definitely have my thoughts on this method. For one, I think that this method might not be worth doing in certain situations. I would argue even this Mankey, it's probably not worth doing it. And the reason why is because even though the odds for me, because I have Shiny Charm and a Lure down, the odds for me are 1 in 1024 base. Even though those odds are significantly worse than a 1 in 273 Shiny Chance, I would argue that me simply route resetting and getting that many more spawns in, I could hit odds probably quicker than hitting odds in terms of comboing each Mankey that spawns in. Because I did 175 in my catch combo. 175 on my catch combo, as you can see. That took me an hour and 35 minutes, roughly, to do. <laughs> so that's a little more than half odds because you gotta take into account that the first 31 aren't really that high of shiny odds than uh, moving forward. So you know, a little, it's around half odds, basically, in a one hour, 35 minute shiny hunt. I'm gonna be real, when I hunt the way I have been before, thinking the combo was working, I would, on average, get a shiny in an hour, and that's just me catch comboing to 31, and then just route resetting or just letting the spawns in and not catching anything else so i do i will say it depends on the pokemon you're catching i don't know if it's worth it for Mankey because you can just fly back and forth between the two patches constantly refreshing spawns and get like a ton of encounters that way plus also when you get the 31 catch combo even if you're not ca continuously catching them they do have a higher chance of spawning so a, a great example of this is viridian forest the pikachu is five percent in viridian forest and if you get the catch combo of 31, Pikachu, regardless of continuously catching them, Pikachu will spawn way more and you get a ton of spawns at once in Viridian Forest. So that's another one that's like not even really worth continuing the combo each time for. So it all depends. I will say, however, the rare spawns like the starters, Charmander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Chansey, if you want to combo Chansey, I guess, or like Snorlax or the Hitmons, all of those rare spawns that only really start appearing after the 11 chain, those ones are 1000% worth doing this method for because the way I was doing it before is that once you hit an 11 chain, no matter what Pokemon you're comboing, those rare spawns will have like a guaranteed spawn each time, but it's only a max of one at a time. So what I would do is for Squirtle, I catch comboed Pidgey to 31 and then went to the area that Squirtle spawned and I would just run into the Squirtles and run away from them to force another Squirtle to spawn. So I was seeing way more Squirtle than anything else. But in reality, if I were to continue to catch Squirtle to get the combo going, I, it would be the exact same encounter rate, but Squirtle would just have a much higher shiny chance. So those rare spawns are 1000% worth doing it this way. But if you're going to say like Mount Moon and you're trying to get Clefairy or you're going to like something in Viridian Forest, I would just say do it as you, as you would before because you'll get so many spawns and with whatever Pokemon you're comboing, that Pokemon's probably going to spawn the most anyway. So you will be less likely to phase regardless. And you'll get the you'll probably get a shiny relatively quickly probably way faster than doing it this way we got the shiny Mankey 
This will be going in for my Let's Go Shiny Living decks. If you do want to check out that series, I will leave a card in this video or the end screen, and you can check out my progress towards that. Um, I am definitely going to be going about this series a lot differently now, knowing how the odds work. Um, yeah, but as, as I've been saying, it does really depend on what Pokemon you're going for. If there's an area that doesn't have too many spawn points, 100% do this. If there's an area that just like feeds you Pokemon after Pokemon, then... I wouldn't even consider it because you'll you'll probably hit odds in the 1 in 10 24 scenario way faster than hitting it in the 1 in 273 scenario. So take that as you will. I will say this would have been really good to know when I was comboing for Meowth because I phased like seven times for a Meowth and I it would have been I probably would have gotten it first phase and I probably would have gotten it faster anyway because I was running into them regardless. But yeah. So it really, it depends on where you're at and it depends on what Pokemon you're going for, but uh, this method definitely works when you're continuing the catch combo. So let's check this thing out. Well, I mean, cause we're going to pretty much turn this into a let's go episode. Um, let's check out the sand true we got to at the beginning of the video. Cause that was a little goofy, but here's all of our mankeys. Let's go find that sand true. Sand true's right here. I'm going to guess it's going to be hasty nature because it appeared really fast it's gonna be impish nature and those stats are terrible because we not we're not comboing for it and let's check out the mankey we just got let's favorite that i'm gonna guess this one's gonna be docile nature it's gonna be jolly which is actually really good for this i'm pretty sure yeah it's it's lowered speed or lowered special attack up speed so that's actually really good for mankey so that's pretty cool a few tips I will say. One thing I figured out, I don't know if this is true for every Pokemon, but I had mentioned earlier in the video that when you get, when you catch a certain number of a Pokemon, the odds of catching that Pokemon increase. So the circle color will change to closer to green the more Pokemon you catch. I noticed on Mankey that when the circle turned green, that was after I had caught 89 Mankey in my Pokedex. That is a very weird number. But that was just the number I got. It was on a chain of 86, I'm pretty sure, and it was 89 total Mankey caught in the decks. I don't know if that's true for every Pokemon or if it's just around that, but after the circle turned to green, I pretty much had a 100% catch rate on Mankey. I had one instance where a Mankey broke out once, and that was it. So... I guess around the 90 mark is what you're going to look for if you want to have the really high catch rate for the Pokemon. So obviously if you're chaining for them, that is a good method for that. Um, another thing I noticed is that once you start getting a higher catch combo, you get a ton of candy for catching Pokemon. I was maxing out for Mankey, for example, gives Mighty Candy. It gives Mighty Candy, Mighty Candy Large, and Mighty Candy Extra Large, and then also Mankey Candy. But I found out that I was pretty much maxing out my inventory space with Mighty Candy after every 15 to 20 Mankeys I caught. So if you really want to get money, after like every 15 to 20 Pokemon you catch, go and sell your candy because you'll max out the number and you'll just overflow it and you'll lose a lot of that candy. So I would really recommend it because doing this method is very uh, Pokeball heavy. So when you're constantly going back and selling all the candy you're getting after every 15 to 20 Pokemon you catch, it'll not only make up for the Pokeballs you're spending, you'll actually make a lot of profit. Like I started this hunt with like 400 Pokeballs. I, at one point I had over 500 Pokeballs and we also ended up buying like 50 more great balls right now we have 630 mighty candy we have not been catching that many since we uh sold the last of it and we also have 32,000 pokey dollars which we we pretty much started at like zero so um and that's after buying a bunch of pokeballs and stuff already and we still have this much money and that much candy to sell so every like 15 to 20 pokemon once you get past like the 50 chain or so Go back and sell your candy if you want to make profit on it. Also, like I would say if you're in like a cave that's hard to traverse and you don't want to do that every time, just don't worry about it. Just make sure you like go through the Elite Four a few times to get a lot of money to make up for the Pokeballs you're going to use. Other than that, I'm pretty sure that's, that's everything I want to talk about with this method. So let's take our Mankey out of the Pokeball. I also want to say I started... Uh, there's the comparison if you want to look at that. Um, I also want to say that I was only keeping track of the Mankeys that had spawned in right after catching a Mankey. So, 
if two Mankeys spawned in, I would only I would only encounter one of them, and I would only catch one of them because when you catch one, the next Mankey spawn is going to be the thing that has the highest shiny rate. Meaning, if two spawn in, you don't have to catch both of them. You just have to catch one of them and then wait for another one to spawn. So you can just leave the other one and not worry about it. So that's what I was doing. I was pretty much only keeping track of the catch combo. I think moving forward in my series, I will only I probably won't keep track of the Pokemon anymore if I am doing this method because the ca the catch combo is just gonna keep track for me anyway so other than that I think that is it if this information helped you a lot make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe if you haven't done so yet and that is gonna be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like comment subscribe ring those notification bells all that good stuff be sure to join the domination and I will see you in the next video.